Welcome back guys, Jimmy Jules here again with another Cray Prop tutorial. In today's episode, we'll be looking at how to make a bunch of different NPCs that also work in multiplayer. First of all, we'll look at how to build a NPC that gives you an object. In this example, it's a gun. Then we'll look at how to build an NPC with a shop, so that when we approach the NPC, it gives us the option to view the shop items. Then finally, we'll be looking at how to make an NPC that gives you a quest. First of all, we'll build the base for all of our NPCs. Each of the NPCs will have the same basic underlying props, so we'll make this setup and then we'll put it in a box for easy copying. First of all, we're going to need something to trigger our NPC. For this, we're going to use a sensor prop. We also want our NPC to look at the character, and for this we'll be using a look at rotator. I'm just going to glue our character, in this case Porco the pig, to the look at rotator. We'll be using a selector to control the props for our NPC. I've got this set to multiplayer and I'll go through why shortly. We'll be using the detected output from our sensor to activate port 2 on our selector, which will start our NPC's interaction. We'll then plug in a text displayer into port 2 of our selector. In this case, my text displayer is saying space to continue because we'll be using the spacebar to continue through the prompts for the NPC. I'm also going to plug in some text into port 2 of our selector, and in this case, my text says you've done well to make it this far, and then we'll press space on the keyboard to continue to the next prompt. If we make another text displayer, I'm making this one say, take this, it will help you along your journey. And for this particular setup, we'll be giving the player a weapon. We want our second prompt to show up after the first, so we'll plug this text displayer into port 3 from our selector. Now we just need a way for the player to cycle through the prompts. For this we'll be using an input trigger, and I'm using the jump key which in this case is space. I'm going to use the key pressed output, and we'll plug that into the next input on our selector. So when we press the space bar, it's going to proceed to the next port on our selector. We can test this in playtest mode. If we walk up to the pig, it will say you've done well to make it this far, and then we press space, and it says take this, it will help you along your journey. At the moment our input trigger is always turned on, which is not what we want because then the player could cycle through the selector when they're not in front of the NPC. We want this input trigger to be powered once the NPC interaction is active. We know that once our selector is not on port 1, that our player is talking to the NPC. So we'll grab a NOT gate here, and we'll plug our port 1 into the IF input, and we'll plug our NOT gate output into the input trigger's power. This means that when the selector isn't on port 1 anymore, it's going to activate our input trigger, so the player can cycle through the steps on the selector. We also want some sort of indication for the player to continue through the prompts, so I've made a space to continue prompt, so the player knows to press spacebar to move to the next text. We're also going to be powering this with our NOT gate. Something that would really add to this interaction is a camera angle, and we can also lock the player's movement while they're interacting with the NPC so they can't walk out of range again. To lock the player's movement, we'll be using a few more input triggers. We'll make four more copies of this, and I'm going to highlight all of them, right click and select the settings option, and I'm going to set each of these to a different player movement control, forwards, backwards, left and right. We're going to power each of these with our NOT gate, so that when the player is interacting with the NPC, these will be active. Because we have the lock player option enabled, it's going to stop the player from being able to press these buttons while they're interacting with the NPC. We'll also go and grab a camera prop from the library, and we'll open up the camera settings for this and hit the test camera button, and we'll get the camera with a nice view of the pig, with a bit of room for the player as well to fit in the frame, and we'll right click to exit test camera mode. With that done, we're going to glue the camera to Porco the pig, so we'll hover over the camera, press the G shortcut, and then click on Porco the pig. This means that as Porco turns, the camera will turn with him and keep the same camera angle. That's the basic setup for our NPC, so I'm going to highlight all of these, press the B shortcut, and then put these into a box. This way we can just copy the box, and it will copy the entire setup as well. We'll also be using this setup for the other two NPCs in the video. One last thing we need to do is plug the camera into our NOT gate, so that it's powered when our NPC is interacting with the player. 
Lastly, we're just going to make sure that the selector resets itself after the player has interacted with the NPC. So we're going to plug our port 4 into port 1. So once the selector hits port 4, it then resets the selector back to port 1 again. We can set the ports on our selector back to 4 as well because we don't need that extra port. And now we can go and test it. In play mode, you can see that Porco is rotating to face the direction of my player, which is perfect. Then when I walk up to him, the camera is enabled with that nice camera angle that we keep because it's glued to Porco. And the text down the bottom says space to continue so that we know what to do to continue through the texts. So if we hit space, it gives us the next text because that's the next port on our selector. And then we press space one more time and it exits the NPC interaction. So with this basic NPC setup, it's not actually doing anything at the moment but we're going to make it give us a gun. I've just brought in a weapon spawner and a gun manager, and we've just got our weapon spawner referencing this weapon here. After our NPC says, take this, it will help you on your journey, we want to give the player a weapon. So we'll be using port four on our selector, because this is the port that activates just before it resets and stops the interaction with the NPC. So if we plug this directly into our equip on our weapon spawner, now once we've been through the interaction, it'll give us a gun. Easy as that. Because we have our camera and our selector both set to multiplayer, this means that if one player starts interacting with the NPC, the rest of the players in the game won't be affected. So basically they won't all get pulled into the camera angle of that one person who's interacting. Now we'll go through how to build an NPC that offers you a shop. We're going to copy our base NPC setup, and I'm going to paste that in front of this little shop setup that I have here. I'm going to get rid of the sensor that I have in the box, and Porco the pig as well because we'll be using a different character. And I also won't be needing the lookout rotator in this circumstance either because I have a static shop character. I've got a different sensor set up here that's just in the shape of the square of the shop window, and we'll adjust our camera with the test camera button so that we get a nice view of the shop owner as well as the character as well. We're going to keep our space to continue text because this will still be true for the new NPC, but I am going to replace the other two text displayers with some new text specific for the shop NPC. The first text says, welcome to my shop. Then it will say, press space to see the shop, X to exit. We're going to plug these ones in in the same way as our first NPC setup. So just in the order that we want them to appear. Plug this one into port two, and then our last text into port three. On port three this time, we're giving the player an option to press space or X, space to see the shop or X to exit. So we need to copy one of our input triggers and we're going to set this to a custom key and the key in this case will be X. We only want this input trigger to be active when the choice is on the screen, which is when port three on our selector is active. So we'll use that port. And then if they do press X, we want to cancel out back to port one or reset. We'll be using port 4 as the port to activate our shop this time, so I'm going to delete our reset wire, and I'm going to give us one more port on our selector, and we'll instead use port 5 as our reset port. Now we've got this port free to show the shop. If the player doesn't choose to look at the shop though and they press X, we're going to reset our selector, so we're going to grab our key pressed output and plug that into port 5 so that it resets back to port 1. Now we have the full functionality of our shopkeeper here, we just need a shop. So I've got a very simple shop here just with one item, which is a gun. And we're going to activate our shop with port 4 of our selector. Then if the player purchases the gun, we've got this purchased output into our weapon spawner's equip input. So the player is immediately equipping the weapon. We're also starting them off with some cash. But if you need more information on how to set up the shop, go and watch the how to make a shop tutorial. To start all of this functionality off, we're going to be using the sensor that's in the shopkeep's doorway, and we'll be using the detected output again, and just again, activating port two on our selector. Now when we approach the shopkeep, it's going to activate our camera and say, welcome to my shop. Press space to see the shop or X to exit. So if we press space, it opens up the shop window for us where we can purchase our gun, which equips as well. Then if we press space again, it exits the camera and we can go back to playing. We can revisit the shop because we're resetting our selector. And this time, if we press X to exit, it's going to immediately cancel the NPC's interaction and we're free to leave again. Finally, we'll look at how to make an NPC that can give you a quest. We'll be replacing Porco the pig with our large crab here. So we'll glue our large crab back to the lookout rotator and we'll glue our camera 
to the crab. So we've copied our basic setup here again and we've replaced Porco the pig with the large crab. I've also changed the text displayers and these ones say I've got a quest for you, speak to the crocodile and come back to me. This time though, rather than activating a text displayer or something else, we're going to activate a variable modifier to set something to indicate that the quest has been activated. So we're going to use port 4 on our selector and we're going to activate this variable modifier to set the quest active variable to 1. Now I've just made a really basic NPC with a crocodile here. It's the exact same setup as all the rest of our NPCs, but we're going to do something a little bit different to power the sensor. We've got our variable modifier here, and this is getting the value of the quest active variable. We're going to use this to power the sensor. So once the quest is active, then we'll be able to use the sensor. You can see at the moment if we go up to the crocodile, nothing happens because we haven't started our quest yet. But if we go and visit the crab first, it'll say I've got a quest for you, speak to the crocodile and then come back to me. Now if we go up to the crocodile, it'll activate the sensor because it's now powered by our variable. I'm also going to have this crocodile activate one more variable. I've just made an additional variable here and that's called spoke to crocodile, indicating the player has spoken to the crocodile. And when they've completed the interaction with this NPC, it's going to set that variable to 1. When the player comes back to the crab, we need to activate something. Just to make this simpler, we're going to copy our sensor and keep that in the same spot. And we're going to power our sensor with this spoke to crocodile variable. So this sensor is only turned on after the player has spoken to the crocodile. We're also going to turn the other sensor off. So I'll copy this not gate. We'll plug our variable into that not gate and then we'll power our main sensor with this. Then when the player comes back to the crab, we'll get a separate signal from this sensor here. Once the player does come back to the crab, we're going to give them a run speed increase. So we're going to use our second sensor and we're going to activate a run speed variable modifier to change our player's run speed through a player manager. You could modify anything about your player with this signal. I've just chosen to change the run speed. So now we can approach our crab. He'll say, I've got a quest for you, speak to the crocodile. So we go over to the crocodile, he sends us back to the crab, and then we get a little notification saying our run speed has increased, and our player's run speed, or whatever you choose, is increased. Just a reminder too, these are multiplayer compatible NPCs, which means that each player can have a separate interaction with the NPCs. If you are using this for multiplayer purposes, just also make sure that any variables you might have are also set to multiplayer. Anyway guys, that's just about all for this episode. We've got three basic NPC setups here, one that gives you a gun or some sort of object that you choose. We've also got a shop interface as well. And we've also got an NPC that gives you a quest that's only able to be completed in the correct order. If you have any questions at all, definitely leave a comment. Don't forget to like and subscribe. This has been Jimmy Jules, and I'll see you in the next one.